With another successful harvest completed and safely stored away in my bins in September of 1994, I toyed with the idea of maybe shopping around for a bigger combine. There was nothing wrong with my 6620 Titan, which had taken off 12 crops, but I thought it wouldn't hurt to look around and see what was available. When I realized a new Maximizer Combine was financially impossible, I concluded that the only practical choice was to look around for a second-hand John Deere 9400 that would still be in excellent condition. I had given up all hope of finding such a unit, when by chance, in late October, I came upon a 9400 at a distant John Deere dealership. This low-houred machine had been used for three seasons, was always kept under cover when not in the field, and because the former owner was a seed grower, he had kept it spotlessly clean, both inside as well as outside. I was reluctant at first to spend the extra money that was involved, and it took until March of 1995 before I could agree to negotiate any type of deal that I was comfortable with. Needless to say, a month later, and this combine could be seen parked at the back of my machine shed. When it came to swathing my crops, I still relied on a John Deere Model 800 18 foot windrower, which had been on my farm for the past 15 years. This machine was the proper size for the combines I had owned in that time period, and over the years it had certainly given me excellent service. It became obvious after a short time that my old swather could not utilize the full potential of what this larger combine was capable of achieving. So the decision was made to look around for something different. Anybody that has grown Durham in the past would testify that this tall standing crop was subject to lodging at the best of times, especially if grown on heavier soils with abundant moisture. It didn't help either when a good stand of this unique type of wheat suffered under the effects of pounding rain accompanied by strong winds. The end result was a nightmare for the windrowers of yesteryear if they did not have the proper means in which to try and salvage what lay almost horizontal. Today these problems have been minimized as most Durham varieties are of a shorter nature, while at the same time all modern windrowers are designed to handle any adversity that may stand in their way. The same exact rules also apply to canola crops, as they too could prove to be a real challenge under the same conditions. The only option is that ordinary bat reels, as seen on older swathers, simply do not work and an alternative method needs to be found instead. Within a few years, I had found a John Deere model 2360 swather that had all the necessary features, which included the important pickup reel that could handle both lodged cereal crops as well as heavy stands of bushy canola. Its 21 foot cutting width, which could be doubled to 42 feet by using a sliding table, naturally increased my combine's ability to harvest far more acres in less time in any given day. Of course, this 2360 was equipped with hydrostatic drive, hydraulic control of reel and canvas speeds, and an air-conditioned cab, items that are all basically essential in today's world of agriculture. My father started his career in farming in 1918, at the young age of 15, and over the years he witnessed a complete transformation in both farm machinery as well as new farming innovations. Sadly, he passed away shortly before I bought this 9400, and he was never given the opportunity to see this latest design in harvesting technology.
Here in 1948 is depicted a typical harvest day on our family farm, where his 1936 John Deere Model D tractor would supply all the necessary power for his Red River thrashing machine. Unfortunately, what is not visible in this photo is the very large crew of men and horses that he required to keep this thrashing outfit operating throughout the long autumn days. My GMC 6000 series grain truck, which I had depended on for the past 13 seasons, was once again put to good use in hauling the grain away from this latest addition to my farm. Although its capacity of 345 bushels was appropriate for two hoppers of grain from my 6620, there was a slight dilemma when it came to using my 9400 with its 200 bushel tank. I always had to be careful on how full I made the second hopper as there were a couple of times this truck headed out of the field in a slightly overloaded condition. Later, in 2005, after I had purchased a GMC 8500 Top Kick, that problem was solved, as this truck could easily handle two combine hoppers of grain at any time with room to spare. This tandem certainly had the extra horsepower and the load carrying capacity to handle any emergency. And like the 9400, this heavy-duty unit was loaded with many exceptional features that far surpassed anything previously used on this farm. A radical change indeed, when looking back to 1972, when my first combine was a 1965 John Deere Model 65 pull type that is attached to this 3020, which I still own today. At that time, my father would deliver the grain to the bins with my little 2010 pulling a wagon with its 150 bushel galvanized steel tank. All of this equipment may appear small by today's standards, but it was huge compared to what my father ever had to work with. This machine worked for 16 seasons while harvesting many different crops with both the pickup table as well as a straight table. At the time of purchase, I was most hesitant in spending the extra money and stepping up to a larger unit, but without a doubt it was the right decision at the right time for all the right reasons. My record books clearly show that this combine used less fuel to harvest more acres while thrashing more bushels than in the previous 40 years. It truly lived up to its name as a maximizer. I thank you for watching.